Do you want to use a full screen image or even a large image on your PowerPoint slide and now you want to highlight a certain part of the image? The rest of the image should be faded or dimmed. Next you want to move the highlight area to another part of the image and then yet another part. So you want the highlight to move between different parts of the image all on successive slides. So how do you do so? Before we go and learn how to do so, let's see some sample slides that use this idea. In this first set of sample slides, we start with a picture of small plants including some cacti. We then fade into a slide that highlights one of the plants. In successive slides, this highlight area moves from plant to another plant. And then we end up with the original slide that we started with. In this next example, we have some food laid out on a table. We fade them to highlight the main dish and then move the highlight to individual side dishes on successive slides. We end up with the main dish again and finally to the complete image with no highlights. So let's start creating the same slides step by step. Do note that you can download a copy of these slides from the tutorial page. If you're seeing this video on YouTube, you will find a link to the tutorial page in the description below. In a new presentation or a new slide in your existing presentation, access the home tab and then click on the layout button to bring up the layout gallery. Within this gallery, click the blank layout option so that your slide doesn't contain any placeholders. Now insert a new image on this slide. We went to the insert tab of the ribbon and choose pictures, stock images. If you don't have the stock op images option in your version of PowerPoint, you can go ahead and insert uh, any other picture from your computer. We search for plants in the search box here. And then choose this picture where individual plants are placed a little apart. To select, click once so that a check mark is visible and then click the insert button. PowerPoint will now insert the image in your active slide. Now it is important to choose the right picture that will lend itself better to using this highlighting technique. If objects such as plant in the picture overlap each other, it will be difficult to highlight. So it's important that you use a suitable image. We can now resize so that the image fills the entire slide, but this is an optional step. It is, necessary, it is not necessary that you must do so. It's a good idea though to zoom out a bit as you can see we are doing with the view slider so that you can have a better idea of the image being resized relative to your slide. Also do note that if you resize, do click the shift button when you drag the image from one of the corner handles so that the image is resized proportionately. There you go. You can also Crop out the excess areas of the image so that are no longer part of the slide. To do so, first select your picture so that you can see the contextual picture format tab of the ribbon, which you cannot see now. The moment you select the picture, you can see the picture format tab of the ribbon. Within this tab, choose the crop option to see the crop handles on the image. Now we're going to crop out image areas that are not part of the slide. You can see where the slide begins and ends as you move the cropping handles. So we are done. It's a good idea to lose all the crop info in PowerPoint because you need to crop this image again many times to achieve the highlight effect. To do so, we will select the picture and then go to the home tab and press the cut button. Then click the down arrow below the paste button to bring up a small menu and choose the paste special option. This brings up the paste special dialog box. 
choose either the PNG or the JPEG option. We chose the picture JPEG option and click the OK button. This brings up the picture on the slide again. The benefit of this approach is that you have now lost all the crop info. Go back to the picture format tab of the ribbon and click on the crop button and you will no longer find any of the areas that you cropped up earlier above and below the picture. Now select the image and press the Ctrl D button to duplicate it. Now select the image on the back and visit the picture format tab of the ribbon. Click on the transparency button to bring up a small gallery and choose a fairly transparent preset mode rightwards. You will see the effect immediately but you can't see it because the uh, back image at the back is not fairly visible so we will move this image here and you can see the difference. This looks a whole lot faded than the image in the front. Now what we're going to do is we're going to select the image on the back and the image on the front. Go to the home tab and go and click on the arrange option here. Align and say align left. Again go back to the arrange option, align, align top. Click outside the slide so none of the two images are selected. Now select the top image and access the picture format tab of the ribbon. Next click the bottom arrow next to the crop button. Not the crop hop button but the bottom arrow below the crop button. In the ensuing menu choose the aspect ratio option and within the resultant sub menu make sure that you click on the 1 is to 1 aspect ratio proportion. There you go. Now with this still active we go again back to the picture format tab of the ribbon click the down arrow button below crop again and this time choose crop to shape and click on the oval option which you see within the basic shapes category here. We will end up with a circle crop as an oval that uses a 1 is to 1 aspect ratio is essentially a circle. You can click outside for now. You can now see the bottom transparent image as well. However, to those of us who don't know that, that these are two separate images, the appearance seems like a circular part of the single image has been highlighted and that's exactly what we want. Now let us duplicate this slide. To do so, right click within the slides pane on the left over the thumbnail for the slide and then choose the duplicate slide option that shows up on this menu. So now we have two identical slides. On the second slide, Click the circle cropped image and then visit the picture format tab and click on the crop button again. So now what we want to do is resize the crop to make it into a smaller circle. Note that you will see 8 crop handles in the round crop pictures. These are 4 corner handles as you see here and there are also 4 side handles. Additionally, you will see 8 resize handles for the image, these round buttons that you see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Ensure, make sure that you do not touch any of these round handles <coughs> at this point in time. You must only use the 4 corner handles to resize, not even the 4 side crop handles to resize. So what are we going to work with? is one two three four these are the four l-shaped corner crop handles now by using only the four crop handles in the corners resize the circle remember to press the shift key when you resize so that the height and width ratio is maintained if you don't press the shift key when you resize your circle may end up being an oval again and we want it to retain as a circle shape so we will always press a shift key when we resize when you can you can make the crop circle smaller by dragging the crop handle inwards but what's going to happen is sometimes when you make it go inwards it's going to take parts of the area that you want to retain 
so you will have to pass sometimes drag it outwards as well a combination of dragging it inwards and outwards will actually end you end up with getting the exact crop as you want be patient some of this sort of work takes a little time and best results are achieved when you are not in a huge hurry yeah i think that should work now duplicate the second slide again so we're going to right click choose duplicate slide and now we have the third slide now we're going to select this crop circle area revisit the picture top format tab click on the crop button again so what we want to do now is move the highlight area to another plant object on the same slide to do so we are only going to use the four corner handles to crop and nothing else so if i wanted to go to this particular slide object which is a smaller circle so what i would do is i would press the shift key so that i can strain the proportion to a circle and i now would drag it outwards because i want to encompass the area adjacent and then again make it small smaller and i think we are getting there that should work so this is what we started with this is the second slide and the third slide you can see the highlighted area is moving so we're going to press control d again and i'm going to choose the crop options again and move the highlight area to another plant i'm not going to do all plants here if you want to see how we've done work with all of them uh, and highlighting uh, multiple areas you can go and download a copy of this presentation as has been already specified before in this video and i think this should work as well now select the slides where changes in the highlight area have been made which is all slides except the first slide it's easiest to do this sort of slide selection in slide sorter view you can go and choose the view tab of the ribbon and choose slide sorter and now we're going to select the second third and fourth slides and next you go to the transition tab of the ribbon choose the morph option and you can change the timings as you want uh, but we'll let them be at default as per this point in time so now let's play these slides and enjoy the moving highlight effect So as you can see there are so many options that you can play with while using the morph transition effect. Do view our other video tutorials that explore the morph transition effect. If you like this technique do subscribe to the InDesign channel and also like this post. Also there's a link to the slides we used for this tutorial on the YouTube page for this video. We have many more tutorial videos and hope to see you soon. Have a wonderful day. Explore more concepts at InDesign.com InDesign. Make better presentations. Fast.